I suppose, to sum it up with a, with a word, the area that I've been most closely interested in through the whole of my career is, is plasticity, the capacity of the nervous system to change adaptively as a result of its own use. The way in which nerve impulses passing through synapses and connections in the brain can modify the strength of those connections so as to change the computational properties of that circuitry in adaptive ways. First and perhaps foremost, I'm interested in the very early stages of development of the forebrain, the cerebral cortex. The other area seems very remote. Um, I work on vision. I've always worked on, on the visual system. That's extended to a general interest in the cerebral cortex, how it's organized, interconnected, and how it functions dynamically in the adult human. So I use a variety of techniques, particularly neuroimaging techniques, fMRI and so on, to look at the way in which the sensory systems communicate with each other and coordinate their activity. The big challenges in the area of neuroplasticity um, are really uh, threefold. One, to understand the molecular mechanisms. And I say mechanisms because there are lots and lots of them, some are already quite well known. The second is to know how important plasticity really is in brain function. I mean, it's obviously important in forming a memory or learning a task. Is it really important in the everyday business of managing your brain, acquiring new cognitive skills and so on? And the third is, what are the therapeutic implications of understanding plasticity? Can we mobilize it, use it, train it, organize it at a clinical level to help with things like recovery from stroke, for instance? And a lot of what I've done on early development and later adult plasticity in the brain has been to do with this adaptive function. If you think about what the the core of physiology is. It is this notion of an integrative function, integrative physiology, how organs and systems interact with each other. No better example of that than the brain, whose influences permeate everywhere and equally which receives feedback from the whole of the body. So it would be impossible to understand really how the brain works without a physiological perspective. I think it's undeniable that physiology has gone through you know, a difficult period, a period of, as it were, challenge from the emergence of sub-disciplines, pharmacology a long time ago, molecular biology, molecular genetics. The biggest challenge in my mind to physiology is simply to retain the identity of the subject and the core set of skills and understanding that physiology is. There's no doubt in my mind that physiology will be increasingly needed in the future. Because when we identify genetic mechanisms, simple molecular pathways, we need then to go back and plug them in to whole systems, understanding how some, I don't know, membrane transport mechanism relates to the structures of cells, the structures of organs and their function in the whole body. That is physiology. And it's increasingly important as genetics, molecular biology, cell biology become ever more sophisticated and increasingly ask questions which are essentially physiological.